Okay, so we have uh, question nine, which says, the label on battery powered radio recommends use of a rechargeable NICAT, uh, NICAT. Um, although it has a 1.25 volt open circuit voltage. Okay, so let me start drawing diagram of these batteries. So, um, so let me draw a battery for the NICAT battery, which has, uh, so when it talks about open circuit voltage, it's uh, referring to if you had a battery and, and um, starting with this question, we are modeling it realistically with a battery plus uh, internal resistance. So when you are referring to open circuit voltage, what you're measuring is, imagine you have this battery uh, not connected to anything else. That's what open circuit means. It means uh, one end of, uh, there's an opening in the circuit, it, which means it's kind of a counterintuitive terminology because if you have an opening in the circuit, that means uh, it's closed for current because <laughs> uh, current flows through. Uh, so when you have a closed circuit, that's when current is able to flow. When you have an open circuit, then current doesn't flow. So when it says it has a 1.25 volt open circuit voltage, it's telling you that if it, this battery is not connected to anything else, which means the current that's flowing through this whole thing is zero. So there's no voltage drop across the internal resistance then the battery voltage is, the voltage you measure is 1.25 volt. So that's a way of specifying how much voltage this ideal battery has. So 1.25 volts. And the voltage that you are able to get out of the terminals, it'll decrease as the current increases. So that's what the remainder of the question will describe. So I have this circuit for now, and let's draw a side-by-side -side diagram for comparison for an alkaline cell. So for an alkaline cell, we say that it has, um, so it's going to be modeled the same way with some internal resistance that may vary. And with the alkaline, it's saying that it has an open circuit voltage of 1.58. And uh, when we are using this in a circuit, the voltage that we have access to is only after the internal resistance at this point. So as you connect more things to it, as you draw out current, the voltage supplied at the terminals will decrease. Okay, so it says the NICAD cell has this as the internal resistance. Okay, um, let me just write it down. The internal resistance R is equal to 0 0.04 ohm. Uh, what is the voltage supplied to the radio if a single NICAD cell is used? Oh yeah, the question gives us the resistance of the load or resistance of the uh, radio. So, so to complete the circuit diagram, this is the circuit. I have this register here and I have the register resistance of the, the radio uh, or resistance of the load. So to analyze this, what we first need to do is figure out the current that flows through this circuit. And the easiest way to do it is treat these two registers as registers in series. So the, so, um, so the equivalent resistance of these two registers is simply their sum, registers in series. So we can say that the current through the circuit is the open circuit voltage divided by the sum of these two resistances, R plus RL. So let me work out these numbers in SageMet just because it's easier to type things. So 1.25 volt open circuit voltage divided by the resistances of um, internal 0 0.04 ohm plus the load resistance 3.2 ohm. So that's my current uh, supplied by the battery. And for the voltage supplied to the radio, what you have to figure out is uh, take this open circuit voltage and subtract the voltage drop that you will see across the internal register that's given by Ohm's law. That voltage drop is the internal resistance times the current. That's why we need the current. So, uh, so I need 1.25 minus 
the internal resistance 0 0.04 times the current I. So 1.235. So let, let me plug the number in into the thing, uh, 1.235. Okay, good. Um, yeah, well, let's keep going. With an alkaline cell, uh, it has a higher internal resistance. So, uh, and asks, so what is the voltage supply to the radio if a single alkaline cell is used? Okay, let's update our numbers. So we are going to recalculate the current. We have a higher in open circuit voltage, 1.58 volt, and then we have a higher internal resistance, 0 0.2, and the current will remain relatively similar to what. We, oh wait, I didn't print this up before. It, this is similar amount of current as before. Um, I, I think it should be. So let's <laughs> calculate the voltage supply to the radio. So. We are using the same expression as before, just different numbers, 1.58 for the new open circuit voltage minus um, the internal resistance, 0 0.2 times the new current that we calculated. So 1.487 volts. So it's actually higher voltage, 1.487 volts. Now, this is where um, you get to why one particular uh, one particular type of battery might be better than the other one. It says uh, the radius effective resistance. Um, so we've had, we've been using R equals 3.2 ohm before. And this part is now saying consider when your R now changes, it's going to be a smaller number than 3.2 ohm. So it asks, at what value of radius resistance does an ICAD cell begin to supply a greater voltage to the radio than an alkaline cell? So, okay, it looks like I should um, set up some expression. Um, so I've been using these algebraic expressions without <laughs> writing it down. So let me write it down. So for the amount of voltage we are supplying, um, wait, I did... Can I, uh, let me just write it down. So this voltage here should be open circuit voltage minus internal resistance times the current. Now the current is um, the open circuit voltage divided by the internal resistance plus the effect, the resistance of the radio. Okay. So what we want to set up is at what value of radius resistance, let me label that R, or R effective, does an ICAD cell begin to supply a greater voltage? Okay, let's set a point where they are equal. So I think once we find a place where they are equal, then you can see that it'll, their positions will shift. So um, I take this expression, uh, let me just finish writing it out open circuit voltage minus the, uh, let me write down this ratio of the resistances, internal resistance over internal resistance plus the load resistance times open circuit voltage. So um, we have, so we have a voltage of NICAP minus the internal resistance of NICAP divided by internal resistance of NICAD plus R times the voltage of NICAD is equal to voltage of the, um, of the alkaline cell minus internal resistance of alkaline cell divided by internal resistance of alkaline cell plus R times the open circuit voltage of alkaline cell. Okay, now this uh, expression might, so make sure that you agree that this uh, equation is correctly describing what we have been talking about here. Now, as you look at this equation, it might look complicated, but it's actually not because it has only one unknown. This resistance R, the effective resistance of the radio, is, that's the only thing we don't know. We know everything else. Now. When you have such a simple expression, 
Um, this is the kind of thing that, uh, okay, I say simple, but so when you're actually going through the algebra to solve for R, that can get complicated. This is where it's so nice to have something like a computer algebra system that can solve it for you. There's a function called the solve that will basically do the algebra for you in uh, something like a sage map. So, so let me just demonstrate that. I think that will save me a little bit of time. So <laughs> I'm going to declare my, my variable first. This is the variables that I'm going to use in my equation. So if we nick, um, r nick, and uh, do I need r? Yeah, the capital R, um, if we alk, r alk, um, I already have r. Okay, I think that's it. Yeah, oh, I guess that overwrites the numerical version of R I've been using. Okay, so those are my variables. And my equation is uh, basically this. We nick minus R nick divided by R nick plus R times uh, we nick is equal to, um, I, I think it's okay I'm not coding things. We alk minus R alk. Oops, uh, no underscore uh, arc divided by r alk plus r uh, times v alk. Okay, yep, that's my equation. So this is how the solve function works. Um, I'm going to store the result into a variable. So solve the equation, equation, solve it for this variable r. And I think it should just solve it um, after some initialization shouldn't take this long each time because it's a pretty simple expression unless i made a syntax error okay so when i look at sol that tells me what the answer is it's an array of things and you can see that left hand side is all for r and the right hand side uh, oh and i guess r equals zero is somehow on one of the possible answers okay so i just need to plug in the numbers so let me do it this way. So um, the, the first uh, item, that's index zero, and I'm going to substitute in uh, this uh, dictionary of values. The voltage of NICAD uh, battery was, uh, wait, I forgot it. Uh, I think it's 1.25. Uh, yeah, voltage of NICAD battery, which is 1.5 volt. Um, the internal resistance of NICAD battery, which was 0 0.04 ohm. Um, sorry, that space is bothering me. Okay. Um, voltage of alkaline battery, uh, which was uh, 1.58 volts, and then internal resistance of alkaline battery, which was 0 0.2 ohm. I think that's all the numbers I need. Yeah. So let me just plug in the numbers, and I get at R equals 0 0.566. That's where amount of current provided by NICAD battery with a much lower internal resistance, which means it's more effective at providing higher value of current is um, higher than the voltage that can be supplied by alkaline cell, whose internal resistance is beginning to be compa uh, comparable with this effective resistance of the, of the radio. So at R equals, 0 0.566 ohm or smaller, a greater voltage can be obtained with the NIC cell. So let me just plug it in. Oh, wait, I didn't plug in the other value. Let me do that while I'm doing this as well. 1.487. So, and uh, this is uh, part C <laughs> illustrates why I advocate for uh, dividing up your problem-solving strategy into basically two steps. One set of steps uh, gets you to this uh, place here, where you have an expression for mathematical equation that you're trying to solve for. Because that's the part that needs a human being, needs a sentient being to translate this uh, um, language into mathematical language. Once you've done that, then the rest of the steps can be automated. So, you know, if you want a job that can't be automated, you should be doing the first step. Uh, the second step, computer algebra can, can do it. It's not something that really requires a human intelligence.